Now, the other seminar that was very critical in terms of our work was the Connected Learning Seminar. And this is a seminar that uh, lays the foundation for ePortfolio use at LaGuardia. And a critical component of this seminar that really you know, touched us in terms of this project was the connection, using ePortfolio to connect students. Uh, and in this case, across two course, two principles of accounting, one course, but to do it in a way that it adds value to what we are doing in the classroom, or in this case, infusing writing in the classroom, and not to add extra work. So, um, you know, on this slide, uh, I'll share a little bit about the different activities uh, that we had students do over the course of the semester, and the modes that we use for them to uh, communicate with each other, and obviously communicate with us. With us. The first activity that they worked on, uh, and in this goes uh, with you know, building uh, a social network, I guess, or a connection across the classes, uh, students completed it about me, and they were assigned partners in the other class. So student A in my class was assigned student A in Andrea's class. So her student drafted it about me, my student drafted it about me, and they went, they reviewed, they gave feedback in terms of you know, hitting all of the, the requirements of the assignment, just to get their feet wet in terms of you know, what uh, would happen over the course of the semester. The next activity that we had them do was um, adjusting a balance sheet. We presented the students with a, one financial statement, in this case a balance sheet, that was uh, incorrect. And we had them look at it and make corrections, use the common feature on the digitation platform uh, to communicate uh, what changes they made to have the balance sheet balance. Then a student in her class comes, look at the response, uh, is it correct, is it not correct, give some feedback on it, and her student will obviously have a chance to reflect on what he or she uh, did. And that was in the form of a business memo. Yes. So students were also using business uh, drafting. Yes, all of these activities. The balance sheet was done in the format of a memorandum. Uh, the next activity, analyzing shipping document and reconciling inventory. That activity, uh, what happened there was that um, a company received a letter from a client saying that I received the bill and I only got half the inventory. What's happening here? So the student had to um, communicate via a business letter what happened, why is this the case, and they obviously did research in terms of the shipping terms uh, associated with that, um, that particular transaction in terms of their communication. Exploring ethics and business ethics, we presented students with an ethical dilemma, and they had to one, figure out what the ethical dilemma uh, is. Um, we had a discussion with them uh, about ethics, business ethics, and how concepts are transferred from one personal, uh, personal life into a business uh, setting. Um, and in that example, if I remember correctly, they were more the, uh, in, in the role of an advisor yeah. and, and providing uh, feedback in terms of options that's available for someone uh, to deal with an ethical dilemma that they might face. And the last activity uh, that the students did over the course of the semester was a reflection in terms of what they learned in terms of um, their communication skills in general and in terms of our communication skills in, in business. There was a workshop, a one hour intervention that we did um, in this course and it was co-led by a professor from our English department and also a, a business professor and they really walked the students through these uh, modes of communication, the email, the memorandum, and the business letter, the structure, the content, when appropriate, where appropriate to use, consider things such as audience, uh, and so on and so forth. And obviously I have all of those listed there, and they also, what they did is that they provided uh, a list of resources for the students to really um, go to if they need help. One key thing that really came out of this is that um, we just started a discipline-based credit-bearing first-year seminar at LaGuardia also, and based on the work we did here, we actually created a video where one of the uh, professors, the business professor, uh, who also has a master's degree in, in English, um, she actually did a video uh, talking about these and a lot of the activities that we're doing in the first year seminar is having students communicate using uh, these modes. Okay, so I'm going to 
Okay, so just moving along to you know some examples and also some of the work that we did in class, we wanted to have an idea, thank you, of uh, the type of writing that we were dealing with. You understand that we were starting from scratch. We didn't really know what to expect. And you know we were kind of, to, to some extent, we had been developed, but we were also developing as the students were developing. So we had an anonymous 20 minutes, you know, controlled writing in the class uh, based on a prompt where we asked students, you know, it was one of their uh, uh, classmates saying that I missed the class about financial statements. Can you please explain this to me? So this was the pre-work that a student did uh, explaining uh, the financial statements to their uh, classmate. And then afterwards, after the uh, uh, business writing workshop and all um, these uh, assignments that we had given to them. We then had a post in class just to see what's, what the same students were capable of. This is called student number 25. What you may notice is now that the student, instead of just focusing on content, is now actually focusing on structure of the, of the piece, uh, on being concise. Right, being clear and also went as far as creating an attachment saying that you know I'm attaching to this email a diagram of how the financial statements work. These were the types of uh, concepts that were shared during the workshop and even during the writing and peers were reviewing each other's work saying you know maybe you want to bring this out of the, the discussion and, and show it in a separate document that's being attached because you need to be more conscious of audience right who's looking at this who's reading it and so forth. Um, another example of work that was happening and the social nature of this work, which, you know, we could talk about this for a while. I wish we could show you the portfolio, but time doesn't allow. Um, is a student, you know, writing the memorandum about how to fix this balance sheet. The work was just uh, phenomenal. Some of the work that came out of this, this student also went so far as doing uh, an Excel spreadsheet to show how to fix the, um, the balance sheet. And then you have her, uh, uh, you know, partner, which was the person from uh, you know the other class, that is saying, look, this is really great, but think about these few things. You know, you want to be neutral, be non-judgmental. Maybe you could be a bit clearer in this part. And so we had students reviewing each other's work, speaking to one, one another in a fairly non-confrontational way, but still really appreciative of the input that the peer has. And I know as faculty, we may be looking at this in the same way. You know how much work is involved here for me as you know as a faculty and what I can say is that Professor Beaker and I spent maybe a week before the semester started setting up all of these assignments in advance we spent maybe an hour once the dust had settled in terms of who's registered for our classes pairing the students up and creating a workspace for them and thereafter all we had to do was roll out the assignments and have students take care of the reviewing of each other's work. We would go in and read, and sometimes they were surprised that we were reading because we would speak about general themes that came out during the class, but we did not have to go in and do you know, extensive grading of work. It was more on a completion basis and students reporting out afterwards what they actually learned. So from a faculty perspective, the workload is, is not excessively more, and also um, for our purposes, I think the value add is that we are able to see now which types of things actually work with writing in uh, the accounting discipline. So we thank you very much. If you are interested in